Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to start my lecture about the cell as a machine. So as you know, this textbook, which I already shared with you, the cell as a machine is written by Michael Sheets and Henry Yu. Yeah, especially Michael Sheets is a big guy in mechanical biology field. And then when he is, he worked with Henry Yu in a mechanical biology institute in Singapore. Yeah, they made this as a textbook for the beginner and then intermediate person who meet the mechanical biology. So this is a very conceptual book when you look at the mechanical biology field. So I strongly recommend you take, take and buy this book and then read it. So and then as you know, the Perero, 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 we, uh, Kusaks, yeah, which we, uh, who we met before using our online system. Also, he worked as a postdoctor with Michael Sheets when he was in the Columbia University. So Michael Sheets is uh, appearance like that, and at the time. He was a founding director and collaborator in Mechanical Biology Institute in National University of Singapore. And then this is his biography. Uh, Columbia University professor, more than 40 years experience in BME field. And then Singapore moved with Ho Cha Ryong at Department of Biological Science. And then Purple Sheet, maybe so this some MBI center in Singapore, and then finally he can be a founding member, a founder of the, this MBI center in Singapore. So his research area is cell migration, cell cell, and cell substance interaction. Research interest is morphology of cell organs and whole organism is determined by the generation of force on the immediate environment, which is either ECM or urgent cell. We are currently engaged in studies to understand the detailed molecular mechanism involved in a variety of phenomena from cancer metastasis to brain function. Further, we are developing several new tools and the protocol for measuring cell forces at the molecular level, which are revealing many new aspects of how cells can both generate and respond to external force. We have an effort underway to define quantitatively the steps involved in cell adhesion to and spreading on the matrix coded surface. Using a variety of cell lines that are missing protein in various motility pathways, we are determining the quantitative changes in the separating process. This will enable us to generate a detailed model of the process of spreading that will be a model for further studies of how cell differentiate regenerate tissue or metastasize. So as you can see, this research interest, he is a very fundamental researcher about the cell and cell to cell or cell ECM interaction. And then when you look at his Google Scholar, uh, his total citation is like over 60,000, and then every year over around 3,000. As you can see, Pere Rosa Kushax is one of the, his collaborators. And then he published many good journals from Nature Science and Nature Material, something like. So when you look at this textbook, you can feel how this big guy can see the cell. And then you, in my lecture also, I want you to know the concept. So when you see some cell behavior, behavior or cellular function, we think that this is some life. This is some, somehow uncontrollable, something like that. But in his opinion, he always write down the sentence like he think how about thinking a cell as a machine uh, revolutionary machine and then robust machine fast machine how the cell as a machine they can actively do something in terms of cell proliferation cell migration or cell differentiation so in terms of this kind of concept you can see more good phenomena when you see the change of the cell in mechanical biology field. Then, this is the context of the textbook. 
so maybe today or today and then Thursday we will finish one to five and then other part we can finish other semesters so part one is principle of a complex function in robust machine so you have to understand what is the principle when you look at a cell you always consider the cell as a robust machine and then there are certain principle how to understand it and then you after getting the principles, you can see how the cell they design and operate, operate by themselves. Especially they have very complicated function and the complicated component, how they interact with each other. And then finally, how they can be coordinated. Yeah, so when we screen out this textbook, maybe you can see more, you can see the cell in another point of view. So you try to think in another point of view when you read this paper. So first, principle number one, we have to consider cell as a robust self-replicating machine shaped by the evolution. The cell, in terms of science field, the cell, they didn't, they, uh, they are e evolved from the some molecule, right? So which means that this is the outcome of the evolution. So how cell can survive? Because they should be robust. Robust means they react very fast, quickly. And then they have to proliferate, which means self-replicating. One, two, four, eight. Okay? So we always consider the cell is a robust self-replicating machine. And then they are evolved from the something molecule. So when you look at this cell, okay, this is some outcome of the evolution. This is not origin. And then you think that, oh, why my mitochondria is there? How Golgi should be, uh, Golgi is there next to the nucleus, not inside. And then why endoplasmic reticulum with the love ER, they are directly connected to the nucleus physically and then cytoplasm and the why there is why they have membrane something like so in this when you look at the cell you have the, another concept point is that how they are evolved why mitochondria is located here not in the nucleus in the cytoplasm something like and then when you look at the cell okay as G, g1 g0 s phase and g2 and n phase and then this is outcome of the uh, robust and efficient evolution. So may maybe some cell, they make some proliferation like G0, G1, G2, S, M phase, something like, for example. But they didn't survive at the moment, which means this is not efficient. And then, which means this G0, G1, S phase, G2, M phase is most efficient way to make the DNA and then another cell. So in this context, you try to understand how, why this is the most, most efficient way to do that. And then as I said, robustness, fast response, is strongly favored in the evolution of the cell function. Let's read this sentence. Cellular function that enable species to survive and carry forward the genetic material must be preserved through many different adverse conditions. The property of the robustness is therefore strongly favored in the cell. Robustness is defined the, as the ability to adapt to and tolerate a varied condition such as changes in proteins, salinity and pH, temperature, nutrient level, other environment factors such as disease or predation. Robustness has a cost and a very specialized system adapted to an unusual environment can at the time outcompete a more generally adaptable organism. For example, in caves where there are limited food resources, salamanders have evolved to become blind because they don't have any light and to have no pigment in their skin. Because skin, when they need some pigment, which means to protect the UV, right? But producing pigment and eyes requires variable energy and animals without those features 
have a slight selective advantage. However, if the cave was suddenly open to the light, the specialized salamanders would not compete well because they, well, they would be seen more easily by the predators and then would not be able to see predators to evade them because they don't have any eye. Therefore, a robust organism might not dominate in every situation. But over time, with many different challenges and sub substrate environmental changes, robustness is favored over efficiency to survive. In this case, this uh, salmonier, when the cave is open, but from the next generation, the, there is no change, which means all, they are all eaten by the predators. Right? They cannot survive. So in DNA, they have all the things to do something. So they have to change the DNA, or when they have, don't have time to change DNA, they have to change their protein or gene level by epigenetic change. So cell need robustness to change their gene and protein. And then, as you know, in this context, mechanical transduction is very needed. Because chemical factors, they need some time, like 10 seconds, one minute. But mechanical transduction, it takes millisecond, microsecond. It's very fast. So cell is evolved to react by the external force immediately, that, which is why cell needs this mechanical transduction. So robotness is often dependent on the changes in the protein composition of the cell through changes in gene expression. The mechanism of the regulated gene expression enables cell to express new protein as needed. Specialized protein can turn down sensitivity to environment perturbation, add in repair process after injury or other types of insert, or transform a cell from one type to another type. Different cell types will exhibit different expression program, which, which is fibroblast versus epithelial cell neural cell. And then, as you know, when you see this, what was it? Bat, Batman? Bat. bat. Yeah, bat, yeah. When you see this bat, as you know, their eyes is uh, disappearing, right? They have very less uh, sensitivity to the light, but they are very sensitive to the hearing. So they are evolved like that. Because originally, they didn't do. They have all the, all the eye, and they have less sensitivity to the hearing, but when they are decided to live in the cave, which means where they don't have, they don't receive any light, and then over the generation they are evolved. And then how they can be evolved? Because light is one of the source, external force, so the eye is blinded, but the hearing to sense their uh, neighbors or other species to eat the uh, meat or their food, they are more developed. So, so cell is selfish, so cell needs robustness. As a robustness, the mechanical transduction to react to the external force, external stimuli, is needed. Yeah. So the writer mentioned like that. Okay, this is some example. So robust cell adaption in different environmental function. So let's say this is, your, this is your cell itself. Your cell have threshold lost height. Okay? And in this in the between in situation with proper number of protein, proper pH, temperature, nutrient, environment factor, they can survive. But when they are suffering from high pH or low pH, high or low temperature, null nutrient, not deficient nutrient, more nutrient, or more dictator, and then they can be dead. So cells should be survived even when they are suffering from this lower threshold. They have to endure sometimes this, this lower or higher environment factor. So the ability of single cell to change the phenotype to survive an environmental challenge is critical for the 
propagation of the DNA. An example of this is the ability of cell to express heat shock protein at high temperature. As you know, heat shock protein adds in the refolding the heat denatured protein and thereby reduce the heat damage to the cell. The various environment challenges that a robot cell should be able to live through are outlined in detail below. This is their figure. So for meeting the high temperature condition, the cell make heat shock protein. Heat shock protein they have for repairing the denatured protein by the heat treatment. So, so when you look at the cell, anyhow, or when you culture the normal condition, the cell behave as normal. But when you heat them, maybe cell have to do something for reacting them immediately. If not, they are easily gone. Okay. So, in terms of the making some material or when you do something, you always think about might be cell have this kind of defense mechanism they have. But in normal condition, they didn't show them. But in certain uh, harsh condition, they are activated. And then when you want to see this kind of dramatic change, you have to, you have culture, you have to culture the cell in that condition. And then let's say this is a cell on the nutrient. Cells start to do proliferation, mitosis, and then they have very different stage. But when your cells are cultured in toxic cunt, because of the toxicity, the cell didn't do the proliferation. They just maintain their body shape. And then they all, all the shape, they can have similar, uh, similar phase of the cell cycle. Okay? Because when they decided to proliferate, they should use the nutrient, a non nutrient toxicant, and then maybe DNA can be damaged. At that time, for the cell as a machine, this is my proper way. In this case, they just, just minimally they maintain their lives. And then when they meet the full nutrient condition, now they, they decided to proliferate. Okay. And then when you think about you are culturing fibroblast in fibronectin and laminin. As we already see in many paper, the cell, when they are culturing different ECM component, cell receive differently. Okay? So same cell are grown on different matrix components, such as laminin, and then they react differently. This means that the cell, same cell type can exhibit multiple cell stage. Although the two cells often appear to be different types, if they exhibit different cellular response to a given stimuli, they may in fact be the same cell type in different cell state. So sometimes, if you see some difference, you have to think about this is different cell or from the different environment. Furthermore, these cell states can change without variation in protein content even. An important implication of this is that bio biologists can get contradictory results from the same cell if the cells are in different stage, like that. When you culture the cell in 10%, uh, fresh 10% FBS or 1% FBS or without FBS, the cell behavior totally change because the cell immediately they should react. And this is particularly relevant in experiments that involve a large number of cells with a mixture of states of biological noise. In this case, average result will be observed instead of the more deterministic insight that could be attained if the cell or cell were in single state. So even though you are culturing the cell like 24 hours in FBS, the cell have very different stage. As you know, from G0, G1, M, S phase, maybe let's say 25% all, all, the, all, the, all the cell phase they have. In that case, when you get the CCK data, this is from the average of these four stages. Okay? But if you want to see some very dramatic change in, in, in very, very phenotype, you have to synchronize the cell cycle using FBS free starvation. Or right after cell seeding, you have to do something. So when I see many mechanobiology papers, uh, they didn't mention detail in the manuscript, but when you see the metric method, they always 
uh, think that right after four hours later, they try to induce some external force, like compression, stretch, other things. But there are not much paper after 24 later cell CD because it's not easy to synchronize their cycle. When you 24 hour cell CD, the cell have all different cell cycle. But initial cell adhesion, the cell cycle is almost similar. So you always have to think that how you make cell as a similar cell cycle, cell phenotype. If not, you have to meet many biological noise. In that case, your uh, observation can, and your difference in the experimental control group is very minimal. And sometimes you cannot see the difference. Okay? So you always think that uh, you can change the cell, cell fate using synchronization, using FBS free cell cycle, or minimizing cell seeding hour as well. Your cell is not react in certain petri dish, and then you can change to another stiffness gel, like PDMS gel. And then when you coat collagen not working, you can try fibronectin, laminin, or other kind of ECM that can be often made by the cell in nature, our body. And then eukaryotic cells are organized into compartment. So when you look at this cell, they are all com they always uh, compartmented, okay? There are several teleological explanations for creating compartments in eukaryotic cell, such as the membrane organelles, nucleus, ER, Golgi, mitochondria, endosome, lysos, isosome, peroxisome. Many functions can occur within a single compartment. Further, the compartment communicates with the surrounding cytoplasm through the generation of signaling molecule and recruitment of cytoplasmic proteins. Let's imagine all these nucleus, ER, lysosome, endosome, they're not located independently. What happened? Maybe the peroxisome, they have to kill the uh, outer source like bacteria or virus, but when they are in the same phase of cytoplasm without compartmentation, they can kill, they can degrade by their protein easily. And then when certain, let's say, Golgi is damaged, and then when Golgi is damaged, in this compartmentation, you can make another Golgi from the DNA, RNA, protein synthesis. But when they are all communicate with each other at the same without compartmentation, when one is damaged, the other can be damaged easily. Okay? So when you think about some car, when car is, uh, they are also compartmented, right? So one, when engine is damaged, you can change the engine and then the car is working. But some car, they are all connected. In that case, when something is damaged, you have to change everything. So in terms of evolution, to react some damage or uh, a harsh condition, compartmentation is very necessary for the cell. Okay? And then after compartmentation, what happened? The compartmentation component, they should communicate and integrate each other because the cell purpose to maintain their cell survival, not for the compartmentation. So this unique compartmentation is also should efficiently work each other to do their job, which means producing DNA and producing daughter cell. Okay. So coordination of function can yield emergent properties. Many complex functions are the result of the multiple tasks that need to be completed in sequence or in neighboring regions of cell. Its function com culminated in the emergent properties Example, when multiple function models are coordinated to perform a multiple task. Without the proper coordination of the functional module, the complex function cannot be completed. Taking the complex function of DNA replication as an example, the formation of two identical double strands for one takes many steps. At a basic level, the existing double strand DNA should be properly replicated. Okay, when you see this, how the DNA is double, they have many protein, helicase, 
Topos SMRH SSB pole sliding clamp PCNA and then other RNA polymerase or protein primer. So these proteins should coordinate each other. So for not only DNA replication, but also cell movement, phase change, all the protein, all the components should be coordinated. And then this coordination is well designed by the cell. By the cell. So when we look at some cell change, we always think about how they are coordinated. So for example, if you change the stiffness and then you see some change of the cell morphology, the cell are more spreading, and then how cell sense the cell stiffness, like integrin, they are using integrin to sense, but integrin themselves, they cannot sense, they are only attach. And then integrin and actin should be coordinated because actin is the only molecule that can make some contraction force, right? And then through actin contraction, contractility, the integrin, actin component, they can feel the stiffness of the substrate. And then this uh, ectomized contraction directly should link to the nucleus, also to, to change the nuclear shape. So when you look at some change of the cell morphology or their cell phenotype, you always have to think that what is the beginning, what is the ending, and then how they are coordinated. This coordination you should study by yourself, and then they should be uh, investigated by your hand, and then they put the data in your manuscript all the time. So when you look at the mechanical biology paper, they always think that how they are coordinated, how they link together, and then from which mechanical technology pathway they are involved. Okay, from the ECM to the nucleus. You always think this kind of point. Okay, up to here, any question? Yeah, this chapter one is very conceptual. So just actually, you already know this concept, but in this time, you always rethink. Okay, in this time, I have to see the cell as a machine, and then very efficient, robust machine, and then they are well designed well. And then from the cell, they have to always react the external environment, not only chemical, but also mechanical. So even they react the chemical things, biochemical things, the mechanical force also, they can be evolved because this is more reactive, more fast than biochemical factor. So you always think, always think about how this cell respond, re receive this signal, and then this signal, how they are propagated to the DNA in the nucleus. So you always, always think about this concept. Okay, so actually this concept is uh, continuously written in the textbook for the next 20 chapter. So they uh, gently produce, introduce one by one. Complex function of robust machine with emergent property. Compartmentation of several components is made for complex function and robust response. This, we always know that. So let's imagine the cell as a machine. Let's imagine this is a car. Car has engine, gear, where they have wheel, so they need some air conditioner, something like. So when you have some signal, which means you want to go fast, you put the accelerator. And then in and out, in and out, in and out, outcome is more speeding the wheel, right? More high number of the RPM. So like that, also cell, when you think as a machine, this can be your mitochondria, this can be Golgi, DNA, actin, something like. So this kind of uh, in and out, in and out propagation should be functioning in the cell, okay? And then this in and out, in and out function should be very fast for respond the outer environment. So this is the concept image. So the principle of the robust machine will stand that function. Let's see that this 
예, figure one. Principle of robust machine. Compartmentation of complex function and function coupling should be simple. So this is very important. Okay. So number one is we already know that compartmentation. Compartmentation compartmentation means that they have some DNA and they have to make some RNA using RNA polymerase from DNA and then this mRNA should be translated to the protein in another compartment. So as you know, the DNA mRNA in nucleus, right? And how this mRNA can be translated in the protein? They are not in the nucleus. They should be exposed to the cytoplasm in ER. In the ER, they should be translated to the protein, which means outside the nucleus. And then from the Golgi, they are modified a little bit and 3D folded. And then when this protein, they need, they have to go out of the cell membrane, they can be exocytosis. But this protein is, they are maintained in cytoplasm they are made cytoplasm. But when this protein is, they need to be located in the nucleus, and then they should, be, should go back to nucleus, okay? So when you look at uh, some transcription factor, let's say YAP, or NF-kappa B, or MITFA, all the protein, they are located in the nucleus, including lamin. All the things, they should make, they should be made in the cytoplasm first. And then they should go back to nucleus again. Okay, this is a very important concept. And then you have to think about how the protein can decide their pathway. How they know the protein in the Golgi modification, the cell tag the protein. Let's say NNS for going to the nucleus, and NES for maintaining in cytoplasm, or another tag for going out the cell membrane, okay? The cell cannot automatically determine by themselves. They tag like our barcode, okay? They adding the barcode in the protein. Then from the barcode, the protein automatically go inside the nucleus or inside the cytoplasm or going out, okay? So when you look at the, some paper, uh, especially the Pere Rocha Kushak's paper recently published in uh, BRICS and then BioArchive and then Nature Cell Biology. He changed this uh, cytoplasm maintain uh, tag or nucleus maintain tag. They changed and then they find out depending on the stiffness or external force and then the, the protein transcription factor they need this tag for recognize the stiffness dependent nuclear transportation. Okay, without this tagging, the protein they cannot react the, react the stiffness. Okay, so you think that how the protein can be located in the nucleus? They already tagging the barcode. Okay, this tagging the barcode is a sequence of the amino acid. So. They are 3D folded and then somehow they are more favored to the nucleus pore binding. Or sometimes they are when they are, should be located in the cytoplasm, this barcode, they didn't react the nuclear pore. They are more happily um, 3D folded in the cytoplasm. Okay. So it seems that the cell that form the basis of a biological system are robust machine. The complex function that they utilize should follow the design principle of robust device. This will be a theme throughout much of the book that will help to direct our speculation about biological mechanism because models that violate the principle of the robust machine will likely be wrong. So this first principle is that compartmentation. They are independently working. This is more efficient, but they should coordinate each other. And then, let's say you have see the in in terms of hypotonic condition. Hypotonic means that uh, less osmo, osmolar 
osmotic power outside and then the water uh, hyper uh, hypo means less osmotic pressure so there are more water infusion okay in that case this uh, endocytosis is occurring fast in this low membrane tension but high membrane tension because of the large water influx they secrete more exo they secrete more protein okay and then when you think why the water is going inside of the cell the exocytosis is more accelerated when you think about the why the mechanism you always think as a simple as much possible okay so you can think that oh maybe the cell have some certain ion channel to react this kind of hypotonic hypertonic tension and then from this uh, osmotic pressure sensitive ion channel they have some certain signal very new signal and then this new signal they come to the nucleus and then they decide to make or oh, maybe this time for uh, exporting the protein to the outside okay and then they have another they have to deliver the signal to the is uh, extra cetera matrix physical and then finally they change their membrane tension and they're going out the molecule this is a very complicated explanation right but simple explanation is that just cell they are fat they are more volume so membrane tension is enhanced so from the physics the, the, the some protein they are located in the near the membrane they are secreted from the physics this is a more simple way to explain and then scientists reveal that maybe if both of them they are working actually but simple way is dominant so when you think about the cell how they react maybe they are able to the external signal more efficiently which means that without very complicated molecular or complicated signaling they want to react very simply go or not from the physics okay so you have to when you think about the mechanism study first theme is that make it simple so your first hypothesis should be very simple and then when they are rejected by your experiment you have to make it more complicated step by step okay so this is their principle compartmentation localized and there can be module and then simple control of the complex function are the best physical biochemically so physical always first and then biochemical and then biological pathway so this is the right way in terms of mechanobiology field and then when you well maybe physical biochemical biological signaling they are all involved but first you have to confirm physically what physically that can be happen and then when that can be explained by physical and then you always do the test first but well, can I understand it fully and then biochemical biological factor you should think more and the complex function are either on and off this is very important they do not continuously working okay they need some time to do that so which means they are how can I say uh, they are not analog they are digital when you think about cell as a machine cell is a digital machine they always decide on and off on means over the threshold they do something below threshold they do not that they do not anything okay so if you change the stiffness let's say from 0 to 1 kilopascal no chain from but certain range 1.1 they suddenly change their shape something like this okay so cell have their threshold to do something and then term limit because complex function turn off after relatively short period and need to be turned on because they should be turned on and off they need 
some limitation of term. Term means there is some gap. Okay? And then, because of on and off, they need some cycle. Okay? Cycle in nature. And then, for just in case, they have backup. So let's say if you knock down just gene or protein, but at, at the moment, maybe the cell react differently. But over time, the cell have always have their backup. So they activate another pathway to compensate them. Okay? So you so you cannot maybe not easy to see the big difference when you knock down certain gene or protein. But which means even though there's no change after knocking down, removing the protein, but you can also think that maybe this cell have very dynamic backup. You can also think like that, even though you cannot see any change. So yeah, this is some example of the compartmentation. Yeah. So let's say the protein translation and test location in ER and Golgi apparatus. From the nucleus, the mRNA is secreted and then exported through the nuclear pore, and then they are located in ER. And from the rough ER, the mRNA is translated to the protein. Okay? And this protein, they go to the Golgi for folding or some tagging, and then they are decided to, this protein, they are decided to going out of cell membrane, maintain inside the plasma. Sometimes they should go back to the nucleus, depending on the tagging. Okay, so for making this kind of product, protein, all things are compartmentated. And then when you look at the mitochondria itself, also in mitochondria, they are compartmented using very different electron transport chain. And then this inner mitochondrial cytoplasm or more inside, they are all different microenvironment. So they are also having very compartmentated component. And then when you think about some endocytosis or exocytosis, this is not, uh, this, we can, when you draw this picture, you can think that, oh, this is a very continuous way, but actually they are all compartmented. Once the cell membrane, they uptake the certain molecule, and then maybe when they're uptaken during this uh, tagging or some ion channel, sometime they go to the RE, late endosome, or sometime early endosome, or sometime they are merging to the Golgi. Okay? And then the protein, when they are synthesized by Golgi, they are going out. Okay? So this physical, endosome, and Golgi, they are all compartmented and they have their own role. But while we are doing this endo exotosis, they are all collaborating each other. So also lysosome, lysosome which means to degrade some protein by yourself, your own protein or sometimes from the bacteria or virus, they should degrade it themselves and then they are also compartmented. And then peroxidum to consume the fatty acid to make some energy, also they are compartmented. And then, as you know, the actin, microtubule, this kind of intermediate filament, cytoskeleton, also they are one of the big compartmented structure. And then always you have to think that when they, this all lysosome, peroxidum, Golgi, and endocytosome, they are communicated each other, how they are linked, how these physical are transported. Most of them, they are using cytoskeleton, acting microtuber, intermediate filament. This is three key components to deliver something from the nucleus to the membrane, membrane to nucleus. But not all, but most of them, especially they directly do something efficiently they use this 
delivery guy, delivery tool. Okay, and then this delivery tool also can be utilized for maintaining their shape. Okay, so when you think about the cytoskeletal component, they are utilized for maintaining the shell shape as a race for delivering something. Okay, so they are coordinate each other. So if you simply that, think that maybe let's imagine actin filament is dominant in stiff sub substrate, right? But when actin filament is utilized or also delivery too, and then you can easily assume that delivery efficiency very high high in stiffness. Okay? So when you when you think when you observe certain actin microtuber intermediate filament in certain condition, one key parameter is oh cell shape is changed. The other parameter is oh how this component can be utilized in other purpose, like delivery tool or cell division or any kind of things. Okay? So actually they share um, so when you this kind of concept is very important for understanding the mechanobiology. So as I told you, uh, how the DNA change from the ECM component or stiffness change? Focal adhesion, okay, integrin, and focal adhesion protein. They are sensing. Sensing means they are just attached, physically attached to the ECM component. And then they need actin for making force. And then this actin is directly linking to the lamin, nucleus membrane structure. And then, you, from this uh, ectomyosin contraction, nuclear pore can be more open in high stiffness. Okay, and then somehow nuclear pore is open. Maybe transcription factor they automatically go inside easily, and then this transcription factor they start to do DNA transcription for your purpose. Okay, so this kind of mechanical pathway. You have always have to think about that, and then you have to reveal one by one by your experiment. Let's say if you change stiffness and see the change of the gene expression level of inflammation, so you have to reveal which focal is involved, actin is involved or not, and lamin change or not, nuclear pore change or not, and then DNA transcription you observe. But when you think only, okay, first and last. This is very poor study, but when you when you point out which how maybe sometimes they don't change it's okay, but you have to point out this change no change this change blah blah blah, and then you have to always show clearly how they are communicate each other, okay. Not only focusing the final outcome gene or protein, but also you have to think about how they are communicated, how they are linked together. And then why what is changed, what doesn't change. Okay, so complex function should not be overly complex. So I told you here. So another design axiom axiom is theme is that the function should be as simple as possible. Why use a multiple multi step process when a single step process can do the same things? Because cell is an efficient tool, efficient machine. When you think about your developer, you always make a machine as simple as much as possible, right? Because when there's complicated, that is to fix. So cell, they always make them as simple as possible. So one, you can always think that one protein can do both. Sometimes multiple things. Okay? The simplest signaling system are often physical or mechanical in nature, not biological or biochemical. So it is common to start with the simplest hypothesis to explain the result and then only move to the more complex hypothesis when the simple one is proven wrong. Okay? For example, consider the problem of DNA supercoiling. The supercoiling of DNA is relaxed by the enzyme TOPO1. That breaks phosphatase sugar bond in one strain along DNA, lex, torsion, blah, blah, blah. Hypothetically, a specialized protein could sense sensing the twist in DNA and then binding the DNA and then recruit TOPO1 to cause the breakdown. Okay. 
but simple idea is that topo one can sensing and drug riding all at the same time. They can do alone. Okay. So hypothetically, okay, sensing and repositioning and then breaking down. But this all the things can be done by the only one protein. Okay? You always think as a most simplest way. Okay? When you think about endoexocytosis, maybe as I told you before, 10 wonder proteins can be involved. Okay? Sensing of endocytosis and then modeling, transporting something, something. But simple expression is that because of physical tension in high stiffness cell, they have more high physical tension. So somehow, physically, they are easily exocytosis. This is a more simple way to explain this. And then, cell is a digital, not analog. So they are largely on and off function. Let's say, uh, actually, the protein level is analog. As you can see, the protein, they, can, they are not expressed, not expressed. They always have some uh, dynamic change. But in terms of cellular function, this is threshold. When protein A is going up, they are doing something, which means cell proliferate, cell migrate, or they are differentiate. They are making certain protein, a certain change. But below the threshold, they don't, they don't do anything. Okay. So like that, this kind of on and off is a biological function. But the protein or gene level, they are change dynamically. But final outcome of the cell, like cell movement, cell proliferation, or their outcome of the cell, they can be on and off function. Okay? So in most biological systems, the major complex functions are digital, either on and off. And do not adjust the rate. Whether it is cell contraction, the production of the mRNA or synthesis of the protein, the function is on for only a limited period and then turn off as if it had term limit. If more is needed, the function is turned on again until the desired output level is reached. Let's say you, when you think about some active myosin contraction, the active myosin contraction not always turning on. One time turn on and then do you need and then they do again. Okay, they all they do not always turn, make some force cell. They like on and off, on and off. So when you see how the cell behave, how the cell migrate from one side to the other side, the cell when you see when you track the cell cycle, they always have this kind of on and off, or cycling. So function the new mRNA or protein is digital while conventional protein is analog. So when, when I say a digital, which means the new function, new mRNA protein, but your conventional protein level is analog. They change like that, but the outcome of the mRNA protein, they can be digital. After certain threshold, they are newly processed, synthesized, but below the threshold, they never produce it. So mRNA production to produce a critical protein should be activated only when the level of the, the protein falls below a certain threshold. And number two is keep basal mRNA production on all the time and adjust the amount of mRNA. Which one is more efficient in terms of cell point of view? So when you think about this, number two is that they, have, they need some sensing of mRNA or protein all the time. So when sensing is damaged, they don't have any choice. And then, as you know, the automatic temperature recording is very difficult sometimes. But you, we have some refresh, which, which has alarm. When they blow minus 80, they start to show alarm. It's very simple. And then, oh, we can easily see that, oh, the temp, the, this refresh is a little bit damaged. But when they are continuously saying, this time 79, minus 3, minus 80, minus 81, and then there are many resources, many signals, so it's kind of noise that we cannot recognize easily. 
Okay. So in terms of efficiency, the new production of mRNA, they only activate below the threshold. So, yeah. So when the ectomycin contraction that can occur, they are not going continuously. Always on and off, on and off, on and off. Okay, this concept. The compressed function that will not automatically run, the cell must activate again for further output. For detail, uh, for detail managing or for saving their energy. So cell migrate by a series of limited extension events or, and often stop moving, round up and restart migration. Similarly in transcription, there is evidence of production of a bolus of mRNA and then a stop to wait for another activation of signal. So in also in not, not only migration, but also MRI production, they always turn it on and off. So basically, the robot system should not persist in an on state unless they absolutely need to be on for the survival of the organism. For example, heart and lung. Heart and lung, they should always should be turning on. But in other body, other cell, they don't like that. They don't behave. They always do on and off stage to save their energy or to make more detailed controlling. And then from this on and off, they have cycle. Okay? Like this one cycle and second cycle. So when you guys want to see some some change of something or effect. They will adjust the level of the stimulus to the point where that effect is seen. A more complete understanding of the control process requires quantitative data and modeling. For example, how the threshold of frequency and strength of stimulus are related. Long the cycle is only the first step in understanding how they actually are involved in higher order function. Which means that, okay, I want to see some change of cell morphology at four hours. This is one time point. But actually, cell have their cycle. So when you see many bio, biomechanical biologic paper, they always see 4, 8, 12, or 24. Because to track the cycle. Because oh, sometimes you can highlight this 4 hour, but cell behave in cycling. So always, single time point is not enough. You have to show them it's a time tracking change. You try to show them, and then they believe more. So, so in detail, when you see this time point, a very short time, we need a very high performance compact car or a live stage machine. So now we, we will buy the machine. Maybe this week we will set up the compact car, right? Mm. So, and this compact car very fast. So you can dramatically. It, decrease your time for taking the image. And then you can know the better. So anyhow, they have some almost last backup and variation of important complex function. So let's say uh, in the cellular context, it's essential to send our new membrane protein and normal, normally the protein to be secreted are transported from Golgi to plasma membrane or microtuber by the microtuber motor, kinesin. So normally, when the cell need to send their proteins outside, they use microtuber motor protein kinesin, like that. Mm. They're using kinesin to deliver the protein to the outside of the membrane, using microtuber kinesin structure. But if drugs are added to depolarize microtuber, like nocodazole, then microtuber transport cease but the proteins are still secreted through the alternative pathway, albeit after a delay to set up the alternative pathway. Similarly, there are many instances where the removal of protein involved in essential function results in only the slight compromise of the function because a like the protein or another pathway takes over. So if you see some, if you cannot see some change, in the case, you have to try to see the change in very short time. 
Uh, at that time, very like 10 minutes, 5 minutes, they can change. But after 10 or 15 minutes later, they compensate it. And then they use another pathway to do that. Because without this kind of alternative pathway, the cell cannot survive. Okay? So don't be frustrated if you cannot see any change, if you treat the inhibitor. In that case, you try to shorten the time. And then the, the change, firstly, observe very big few minutes, and then they are compensated later in another pathway. So, summary, uh, in considering the design of complex cellular function, the principle of a robust machine appears to apply. Complex functions are driven by the coordinate functional module to yield observable activity and emergent property. Compartmentation of complex function occurs through the formation of membrane-bound organelles and local concentration of compartment in cytoplasm. When choosing the most robust way to perform a function, the simplest, you, simple is the best. And then, complex function, digital in nature, will automatically turn off unless activated by control signal. So they on and off digital signal. This means that the default state is off, and that conserves the cell resources. Cycles are critical in complex function because they can be integrated to give a reliable activation signal. How complex functions communicate each other through signal pathway is a critical issue that was not discussed extensively here, but will be discussed later. Okay? So from the chapter two, why is the most important thing is that? This one, okay? Compartmentation. Simple is the best. Physical, more simple, then biochemical, then biological. And the complex function, on and off, not continuously turning on. And then they have term limit, which means their basal level is off condition. And then they are cyclic in nature. And then they always have the backup. So even though you have SRNA, other thing, gene knockdown, sometimes the appearance is not dramatically changed because they already compensated. Okay, I tried to do chapter three, but I think almost one hour, so I'm finished right now. Okay, any question? Mm. Also, this textbook is hard for me to understand fully, but this is my understanding based on. So if you have some time, you look at the textbook, and then maybe you just try to synchronize how this big guy this, this is the father of the mechanical biology, biology scientist, oh. beginner. So how this big guy see the cell or cell, cell situation when you understand their viewpoint and then we can see more other feature when we observe our cell. Okay, thank you.